Good morning. Um, so I built this in Rhino, which is a surface modeler where you can control the control points. And it, you can also build this in SOLIDWORKS, obviously. But the process is a little bit different. Um, I found that if we do this split down the center, it's actually very difficult to match it over the center. So I have an alternate method uh, for SOLIDWORKS that I can use. I'm going to build it with um, Geometry Works features mostly. Um, you can achieve the same thing with standard SOLIDWORKS features. Um, you just have to create more reference geometry, and you know there's a few more steps. Uh, but I think it's a good way to showcase uh, why Geometry Works 3D is such a helpful plugin for surfacing. So this is a five-sided surface. All NURB surfaces are four-sided, and so ideally we have a four-sided layout in through here that uh, creates the result that I want. Now, ideally, we would have zebra stripes that flow from, from this uh, surface blend into this surface blend and from this surface blend into that surface blend. And you can use the fill feature here, which actually creates a pretty uh, acceptable result in this case. Um, you know, but in a lot of cases, the result is not very good, and so you need to have some alternate methods to create good surface flow. So, if we know that we want this to flow into here, we basically want this edge to continue into here. So, we need a blend curve in between these two guys, um, and we're going to create that first. So, I've, I've already built this, so I know um, what the steps are to speed up the video a little bit. Um, so we're going to put in a point, and we're going to put that point 29% uh, from the edge. That gives us this blend curve. Um, and the reason I put it in that particular location is because in order for us to get the smoothest surface, I did a chordal fill here with 8 millimeter in between. And so this point and that point, I want them to be about 8 millimeters. And so that... Um, 29% gives me that, and so the next one, we're going to build another one, and we're going to build that at 29 as well, and that, that's going to give me this blend curve. And, and we can move these points around to uh, play with the flow later on. So now we're going to use a blend curve, and oh, I didn't want to select anything. Let me escape out of that. We're going to create a blend curve, and we're going to go from that point and that edge to this point and that surface. So that is my first surface that we're going to create. And then uh, we are going to create this with a uh, multi-blend in Geometry Works 3D. And the multi-blend needs a specific edge. And since this edge is too long and I don't want to split this surface, a good way of splitting an edge is with a 3D sketch. So insert 3D sketch and then we're going to convert that edge so now I have an edge here, and I'm going to make that point coincident with that point. And so now I have a, a 3D sketch that represents this edge, but it, it's terminated at that point. And that allows me to put a multi-blend in. So we're going to do a four-sided multi-blend. I'm going to turn off my curves for a bit here. So what, edge 1, edge 2, and edge 3 is that sketch. And edge 4 is that blend that we've created. So this is sort of in space, so we're just going to leave that as is. But here we have the surfaces, and we're going to make these tangent to the first surfaces. Um, edge surfaces. And so we're going to use these surfaces to make this uh, tangent. And so we get a preview here. And I'm going to go into the advanced options. I want to have... C2 uniform. So C2 uniform, what that does is gives me curvature continuity through the surface, and uniform means that it's going to try and distribute the control points as evenly as possible. So what does that look like? We accept that result, and we look at the uh, flow here. This is the flow of the control points. Very nice, even flow of the control points here. And if we turn on the zebra stripes, we see that we have really good flow through this intersection. So we're off to a good start with that. Let me turn that off. And so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to trim this back with another curve. 
And that curve is not probably going to lie um, on the surface, but that's okay. My endpoint is here and tangent to surface, and that's this guy. I'm using the least tension. There's a couple very there's a couple options that change the shape of the curve. Um, you have to play with that to see what gives you the result that you want. Uh, I found that when trying this, the least tension gives me the result that I'm looking for. So I'm going to accept that. And so now I need to split this surface. Uh, and I can't split it directly with this curve. Um, but another very useful feature is this. Um, this is sort of a ruled surface. And what I really like about it is that you can create it normal to a surface and it doesn't have to be an edge you can just ha have a curve in this case and the surface so if i take this surface and then i can offset it in two directions at the same time so if i offset it two millimeters in either direction which i preview here i get a um, reference surface that cuts through the first surface that we've created so i'm going to accept that and then i can use that reference surface to trim back the first surface. Let me do that. So now I can hide that guy. And we have a really nice four sided edge. Turn off the points here for a second. Um, we will need to create another 3D sketch. So I'm going to hide this 3D sketch for a bit. Uh, same, same procedure. Um, if I turn back on my points, insert. 3D sketch, we're going to convert that edge, and we're going to make that coincident to the first point, accept that, turn off my points. And so now we have a four-sided opening with four defined edges, and so we can put in a multi-blend. Again, edge number one, edge number two, edge number three is the 3D sketch edge number four is that edge, and then we want all of those to be tangent to the surrounding surfaces. So we're going to set surfaces for everything, then we're going to select our surfaces, preview that, and then in the advanced options, we're going to go with C2 uniform again, accept that result. And so if we look at the control point structure here, again, we see very nice flow, evenly distributed control points, pretty light surface. Um, the one thing that I found is that this actually creates a much lighter surface than what boundary would uh, create. So if I suppress this for a bit, because, you know, if you watch this, you probably go, oh, boundary can create the same thing. And that is true. So if we select these edges. Uh, boundary will recognize this as well, and you can make a tangent to face, tangent to face. And then we pick the other edges. Let me hide the preview for a second. And grab that edge. And then we're going to make that tangent. And we're going to make that tangent. And then we're going to accept that result. Now, at first glance, these will look very, very similar. But if we turn on zebra stripes, for example, we'll see that we have a little bit of a wobble going on here. And if I look at the control point structure, you see that I have 13 in the U direction and 17 in the V direction. And the more control points you have, the more difficult it is to get a smooth transition. So if we delete this and we unsuppress this and we look at the control points, we see that I have seven and eight. So I have way less control points in the multi-blend than we did with the boundary surface with the same input geometry. And if we have the zebra stripes on, we can see we have a really nice flow through here and we have surfaces because of the Geometry Works 3D features that are much lighter. Down the road, if you're modeling and you're, you're, you're making something that's a really complex model, uh, the lighter your surfaces are, the the better your end result will be and the less problems you'll run into. Um, and the other thing that I've already highlighted in my Rhino um, video is that I built everything to theoretical edges as much as possible. It's not always possible, but I try to anyway. And so my primary surfaces here are colored blue. Uh, those are really lightweight surfaces. So if I select those, those are my four-sided surfaces. You can see you know, very few control points, super clean edges. And then those are trimmed back. Um, and then the yellow ones are my secondary surfaces. So I trim those back, put the secondary surfaces in, and then the uh, final ones, 
if I change these, uh, will be my tertiary surfaces. And if I make those orange, so the, the build sequence for this would be set up your primary surfaces first, which would be the blue guys, to theoretical edges. Then we trim those back. And then we blend in between with the secondary surfaces, in this case, the yellow surfaces. And then finally, we put in our uh, multi-blends or whatever method you choose um, to create the tertiary surfaces. Now, these are typically the most dense in uh, control point structure. But as you can see, we've ended up with a result that is still pretty well behaved and quite lightweight. So here's a, a good solution of filling a five-sided edge. There's multiple other solutions. Um, hope you learned something. And thanks for watching. Cheers.